Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I've been promising to talk about Artemis 2 for a while now, and a few of you watched me attempt my first couple lives for the launch and return of Artemis 1. But the Artemis 2 mission is gonna be here before we know it, and there have been a lot of updates, including the naming of the astronauts who are going on this mission. And also, we're going back to the moon. That's happening. No one's been to the moon since the early 70s, and we're actually going back. And this mission is the final step before we step foot back on the moon. So this is space at pretty much its most exciting, so I think we should talk about it. And I'm even wearing, oops, wrong way, my Artemis t-shirt for you guys. Also, please stick around to the end of this video because I have an exciting announcement to share with you guys. But first, we talk space. Let's get into it. Artemis 2 is the second mission in NASA's Artemis program, which is designed to return astronauts to the lunar surface. Artemis 1, if you recall, was kind of a tester, just to check out this sort of figure eight route and see if there were any problems and make sure that we got the Orion space capsule back safely. And as we all saw on my live, we did. So this time, Artemis 2 will be flying a similar path, but it will be a crewed mission to do a lunar flyby. So you might be asking, if Artemis 2 is basically doing the same thing as Artemis 1, what's the point? Why not just go for gold and land on the moon now? It's not like we haven't done it before. In fact, we've done it six times before. Well, for many reasons, and a lot of them have to do with a ton of new tech that we are going to be using. Artemis II will use the SLS Mega Rocket and the Orion spacecraft to launch the astronauts, and neither has worked with human beings inside them before. Remember, Artemis I just had a couple of dummies inside. Dummies with awesome names. Now, those dummies came back perfectly intact, but again, this is a brand new space capsule and a brand new super powerful mega rocket. And also, Artemis II is going to be potentially sending people out into space farther than we have ever gone before. Remember, Artemis One's route didn't just tag the moon and come home. This route will be flying 6,400 miles around the far side of the moon before heading back to Earth. And this is the farthest that man has flown from Earth since Apollo 13. And there's a lot of questions about radiation and life support systems, communications, all essential things that we have not had data involving human beings since the 1970s. Basically, NASA is using this mission to collect a ton of data to inform how ready the Artemis program is to send people back to the moon's surface. We're basically doing that thing where you like drive by the house a couple of times and then pull in the driveway. And if all this goes to plan, we're shooting for the moon. The Artemis II crew was announced on April 3rd, 2023, and they are three astronauts from NASA and one from the Canadian Space Agency. Their 10-day long mission is currently scheduled to launch in November 2024. Reed Weissman will be the commander. Weissman is an aviator with the U.S. Navy who was a test pilot and project officer when he was selected by NASA in 2009. He definitely gives me some Top Gun vibes, and he has space experience, having already been to the International Space Station in 2014. Victor Glover will be the pilot. Glover will be the first black astronaut to fly around the moon. He is also an accomplished naval aviator and was selected by NASA in 2013, and Artemis II will be his second space mission, having previously piloted on the SpaceX Crew-1 capsule in 2020. Christina Cook is a mission specialist, scientist, and engineer, having previously worked at both NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center and the John Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory. She has the most space experience, having spent a record 328 days on the International Space Station. Jeremy Hansen is an astronaut with the CSA and a fighter pilot with the Royal Canadian Air Force, whose previous work has included efforts with NORAD and in the Arctic. He was selected by the CSA in 2009 due to Canada's contributions to NASA, and he's our rookie. It will be his first time in space. So here we have it. Reed, Victor, Christina, and Jeremy. Each of these adventurers has their own story, but together they represent our creed, E Pluribus Unum, out of many, one. 
This is the power of space. This is the power of our space program. It unites people. It brings them together. It brings parties together to explore, to discover, to dream. Together, we will usher in a new era of exploration for a new generation of star sailors and dreamers, the Artemis generation. Together, we are going to the moon, to Mars, and beyond. Now, NASA continues to evaluate data from Artemis 1 to make changes as needed for Artemis 2, and they are already implementing some of those changes. The crewed Artemis 2 mission requires new spacesuits that are built to endure the cislunar environment, which has more radiation than inside low Earth orbit, where astronauts receive more protection. Now, cislunar was a word that I had not heard before, but apparently it's what scientists call the region of space between the Earth and the moon. The biggest mission change from Artemis 1 will be the availability of an environmental system, which will provide oxygen for the astronauts, which the previous uncrewed mission did not require. And that's a pretty critical system, so we gotta make sure that's dialed in. And it's also pretty critical because while this mission is projected to last 10 days, it can be extended up to three weeks, more than double its original time, depending on mission objectives. And that's a long time to be flying around out there. I mean, most of the original Apollo missions lasted between seven and 10 days. So three weeks is quite a big jump. But when they safely return, investigators working with Artemis II will have to spend several months at least analyzing data. But if all that goes to plan, the idea is that Artemis III could launch the year after in 2025. And if the past few years have taught us anything, time in the 2020s just seems to weirdly fly by. So it'll be here before we know it. So as of right now, the four astronauts are in training. They will have to complete a full 18 months of training before going on this mission. I know they just recently met the Orion space capsule for the first time. So I'm sure as they continue to hit milestones, NASA will put out some very wholesome Artemis generation content. And as we all know, I'm here for it. And I will definitely be sharing it with you guys. Okay, so big announcement time. I've been mulling this over for a while. And finally, a couple of weeks ago, I just decided, you know what, I'm doing it. I just launched a Patreon for my YouTube channel. I've really enjoyed making these videos for you guys, so I decided to use Patreon to help support me make this content, but also to have a place where I could post some extra stuff that I thought would be really fun. I'm very much a one-man band making this content, so if you enjoy it and would like to support me, feel free to go to the link below. I'm gonna have a lot of fun stuff over there, including bonus content, bloopers, live AMAs, and a lot more. And I just wanna take a moment before I move on to say, Thank you to all of you for watching. I have been pleasantly surprised by how much interest there is on YouTube about science, monsters, whatever stuff that interests me. And this channel has become a very positive, inspiring place to make content. I love your guys' comments. They're really thoughtful and smart, and there's a ton of different perspectives. So I just wanted to say a proper thank you to you guys for your part in making my channel something really nice. Okay, okay, enough of the mushy stuff. I will keep you guys posted about Artemis 2 as NASA keeps us informed. It's a super exciting step in the Artemis program and that launch <sighs> gonna be amazing. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below and as always I will see you in the next video.